so cold. It's so, whoa, look at that. That was cool. How'd that happen? Blizzard, blizzard conditions in Southern California right now. Last time Los Angeles had to deal with this much snow. Oliver North was trying to fund the Contras. <laughs> Oliver North was trying to fund the Contras. <laughs> because back in the 80s, they used to call it snow. And back in 2017, when Donald Trump first took office, he made a big show of how he was going to cut all the red tape that was choking big business. He gathered Elaine Chao, his secretary of transportation, as well as other cabinet officials. He gathered them around stacks of white paper denoting government regulation. Then he whipped out a pair of symbolic scissors to cut all the red tape because he, like all Republicans, is about eliminating government regulation, all in the name of profit. This is how the richest 1% defund the police. And by police, I mean the federal agencies that, when properly funded, keep the rich and the powerful in line and lock them up. But Republicans want lower taxes for the very wealthy. And then when the government has no money, they defund the police. And by police, I mean the government agencies that demand corporations and the rich obey the law. They defund the EPA, they defund the Department of Transportation so that railroads never have to worry about preventing, preventing chemical spills. And then when there is a chemical spill, the railroad companies never have to worry about getting blamed. Headline, December 7th, 2017, Donald Trump's first year in office. Headline, Trump administration rolls back rule requiring new oil train brakes. Brakes? Who needs brakes? We are beginning to learn that the big chemical spill in East Palestine, Ohio, was caused by faulty brakes. Okay, that is what we've learned. We are beginning to learn that when Donald Trump, this human Zeppelin, promised to eliminate government bloat, when he took office, he reversed President Obama's order requiring all trains that carry oil to install brand new electronically controlled mnemonic brakes by 2021. They had until 2021 to install brand new mnemonic brakes, but lobbyists for both the railroad and oil industries, well, they had a new friend in the White House in 2017. His name was Donald Trump. And so Trump reversed Obama's regulation, which would have prevented the chemical spill in East Palestine. So this is Donald Trump's fault. He waddled into East Palestine this week to blame the federal government, to blame Joe Biden's EPA. You'll notice he doesn't blame Ohio Governor DeWine's response because DeWine is a Republican. That was bad. No, uh, he blames the federal government. And then, and then, as if the people of East Palestine don't already, Steen, I'm sorry, Palestine, as if the people of East Palestine didn't already have their fill of toxic chemicals, Trump decides to take some of his fans to McDonald's, which we know, like the chemical spill, isn't safe to drink or eat. This is a fact. McDonald's is one of the leading causes of cardiovascular disease, obesity, diabetes, and cancer. Forget what they pay their employees or the, or the rainforests that are stripped to raise cattle, the rainforests that are stripped to grow the soybeans to feed the cattle. Forget 
that it takes 660 gallons of water to make one quarter pounder. Google that. It takes 660 gallons of water to make one quarter pounder. Forget all that. Just know this, America. Eating at McDonald's is no different than pouring Drano down your throat. Well, it's a little different. Drano tastes better. The toxic sludge served at McDonald's should be regulated like cigarettes and certainly not marketed to children. If we regulated fast food, it would save us billions in healthcare costs and lost productivity. McDonald's is a colossal drain on our budget and economy. But if you're a Republican, it's all about freedom of choice, right? Poor people living in food deserts where there are no supermarkets. Poor people should have the freedom to choose between McDonald's or Jack in the Box, right? Poor people should be able to choose who gives them heart disease, cancer, and diabetes, right? It's freedom of choice in poor neighborhoods when it comes to fast foods. But good luck getting a new McDonald's past the Beverly Hills or Greenwich, Connecticut Zoning Commission. Then, see, when they want to build a McDonald's in Greenwich or Beverly Hills, then it's all about rich people choosing to protect their idiot kids from that toxic lather of dead cows covered in grease they call a Big Mac. Kimberly Gargoyle is Donald Jr. Trump's, or Donald Tr Jr. Trump Donald's, Don Jr.'s fiance. Kimberly Gargoyle is Don Jr.'s fiance. And he's going to marry her because, according to what I've read, Donald Trump Sr. told Don Jr. he could have her. He, gave, he said, you can have her, quote, because I, your father, can do a lot better. Isn't that nice? Here is Kimberly Gargoyle acting as though we should be surprised that Donald Trump, Donald Trump, her morbidly obese, soon-to-be dullard-in-law, eats at McDonald's, right? He took everybody in East Palestine to eat at McDonald's. Here is Kimberly Gargoyle saying we shouldn't be surprised that Donald eats at McDonald's. He actually really does eat McDonald's. He loves McDonald's. He loves mm. Pizza Hut. So at McDonald's, Pizza his go-tos, he'll get a bunch of things, and then right. we like he likes everyone to try them all. He mm. likes the fish sandwich, the chicken sandwich. Great. He likes the Big Mac. Mm. Um, so what can I tell you? He, he loves it all, the quarter pounder. So we mm. have all that array, and then, of course, the fries. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we when we travel on the road, wherever we go, we actually then have the McDonald's, and we're all eating on the plane. It's hysterical. So it's, it's hysterical. him, it's the whole team. Um, it's some of his biggest donors, and it's just it's fun because he's really authentic. You yeah, know, he's it's, one of the guys. Like, he loves McDonald's, okay? I got to vote for him because he's authentic. He's like me. I smell like onions, rotten carrion, and grease. I got to vote for him. He's authentic. Do you have any idea how rancid the Trumps smell eating this garbage? Who is kissing Donald Trump or Melania or Gargoyle or, or, or Eric or Donald who is kissing Donald Trump Jr.? If his breath stunk any worse, Fox News would ask it to guest host the five. You know, I have a neighbor, very sweet woman, and she's much younger than I am. And for some reason, she orders from McDonald's once a week. And it's like living with a smoker. She brings the bag of McDonald's up in the elevator and then walks to her apartment, and I can smell the McDonald's before her elevator even reaches the floor, right? And then for a week, because she had to go to McDonald's and bring it back to the apartment, the elevator, the hallway, I smell like McDonald's all week. I call it secondhand pre-flatulence. That's what you smell. When somebody goes into an elevator with McDonald's, and then you get in, it's secondhand pre-flatulence. It's a trailer. It's a coming attraction for things that will soon be released out of 
this woman's and her husband's pores and other muddied openings on their disgusting bodies. But Trump's authentic because he eats at McDonald's. How can you not vote for him? He's comfortable in his own skin, all three tons of it. He eats, Donald Trump eats at McDonald's because, well, it has the word Donald in it, McDonald's, so of course he's going to eat there. And his penis is shaped like a McNugget. Donald Trump's penis is shaped like a McNugget. That's how Stormy Daniels described it. Not quite, but read Stormy Daniels' book. He's got a misshapen penis. Donald Trump does. And he stinks. He smells. He smells of McDonald's. I'm not kissing Donald Trump. His arteries are clogged. His office chair seat smells like a Romanian slaughterhouse because he eats at McDonald's. I wouldn't sit in a chair that Donald Trump sat in. He leaks, but he's authentic. Donald Trump is one of the guys. By the way, take a look at Kimberly Gargoyle. Uh, I am trying to be cruel here. Uh, Kimberly Gargoyle is one pound of mascara short of turning into a gay icon. Right? But when my kids were younger, we used to go to West Hollywood for Halloween. I'm telling you, Kimberly Gargoyle is just one shipping container of eyeshadow away from turning into a West Hollywood Halloween costume. And yes, I am trying to be cruel and mean. She sounds, and when she was describing Donald Trump about feeding him at McDonald's, doesn't she sound like the divorced mother of an emotionally disturbed three-year-old about to finally go out on a date and she's giving instructions to the babysitter? Ser seriously, this is what a divorced mother of a really screwed up three-year-old sounds like as she's giving instructions to the, <laughs> to the babysitter. He loves McDonald's. He loves Pizza Hut. So at McDonald's, his go-to's, he'll okay. get a bunch of things. And then we mm -hmm. like, he likes everyone to try them Got all. It. He likes the fish sandwich, the chicken sure. sandwich. He likes the Big Mac. Mm -hmm. uh, so okay. what can I tell you? He, he loves it all. The quarter pounder. So we have okay. all that array. And then, of course, the fries. Right. Okay, of course, the fries. Okay, let him eat whatever he wants. And whatever you do, do not say no to this three-year-old for your own safety, okay? Just say yes. It's, it's not worth it. I'll be back in three hours. I just have this date. Whatever you do, don't fight him. You have my cell in case he throws a temper tantrum and sticks an ice pick into your neck. This is Republican Congresswoman Elise Stefanik. Besides being an opportunistic infection, she is also the number three leader in the House. Did I mention she's a Republican? And it is her job to lie about government, to lie about the IRS, so her corporate benefactors don't have to pay taxes. And she knows some of her corporate benefactors are really stupid, and they can be lied to. Here is opportunistic infection, Elise Stefanik, lying to her corporate donors, lying about what she and the Republicans just accomplished but really didn't. Watch opportunistic infection Elise Stefanik lie about protecting rich people from the tax man. We promised on day one to repeal Joe Biden's army of 87,000 new IRS mm. agents, and yesterday we did just that. Oh, you, you just repealed the 87,000 weaponized IRS agents. You're a liar. You didn't. But some of your idiot rich donors will think you did do that. All you did was you passed a bill. But you didn't get rid of Joe Biden's so-called army of IRS agents. So basically, that's two lies. The first lie is there's no army of IRS agents. That's the first lie. And the second lie is you didn't get rid of the new IRS agents. You're, you're a liar. And that's why you're a Republican and uh, you can't stop lying. And that's why you're part of the House leadership. Congresswoman, 
Anna Paulina Luna is a first-term MAGA Republican from Florida. Oh, God help us. Here she is admitting that opportunistic infection Elise Stefanik is lying. Here she is admitting Republicans didn't eliminate those IRS agents. She explains that there's a Senate and a president who would veto such a move. Take a listen. And for example, these uh, these salaries for these additional weaponized 87,000 IRS agents, which you saw we tried to pass, yet the Senate and even the Biden White House is pushing back on. Sir, I say taxation is theft, and I don't want any more IRS agents than you probably do. Okay, thank you for clearing that up. Did you catch what she said? A weaponized IRS? Weaponized IRS agents. Because the IRS has been weaponized. We must do something about these weaponized IRS agents because they're weaponized, right? Every day I read about some weaponized IRS agents storming a classroom and auditing all these innocent students to death. Another school audit today, seven children, three teachers were killed when a weaponized IRS agent demanded students and teachers produce receipts going all the way back to 2017. The truth is, Congresswoman Anna Paulina Luna, like opportunistic infection Elise Stefanik, is paid to lie. Okay? She's paid to lie. According to Catherine Rampel over at the Washington Post, she wrote this on February 16th. The IRS, the IRS does need more money, but only to uh, audit wealthy tax cheats, and the new money has been earmarked uh, not to hire 87,000 new agents. The, the IRS uh, needs more agents, but the Republicans have seized upon the number 87,000. That's just something the Treasury Department estimated they would need to collect all the trillions of dollars in taxes that go unpaid. The IRS, the IRS estimated we would need about 87,000 new agents to collect all the money these tax scoff laws don't pay us. This new money uh, that comes through the Inflation Reduction Act, it's going to be spent to replace agents who are about to re retire and more importantly, upgrade the IRS infrastructure, and they will conduct audits, but only for people making more than $400,000 a year. And that pisses Republicans off. So they lie, they lie, and they lie, and they lie, and they say 87,000 new weaponized agents. It's just a lie. That is their job to lie to say things like taxation is theft taxation is theft yes but only when it's used to pay your salary this is the other lie that republicans libertarians there's no difference this is the lie that they repeat over and over again that taxation is theft and this is again from Catherine Rample She's writing in the Washington Post. She says the top corporations in America no longer get audited. Poor people get audited here in America because poor people can't afford an accountant or a lawyer. So they audit poor people. They audit them on the earned income tax credit. But the rich, the millionaires, the billionaires, they're no longer getting audited. She writes that in 2012... 93% of companies with $20 billion worth of assets or more, they underwent some kind of audit each year. As of 2020, only 38% of those same corporations are subject to an audit, and the same applies to millionaires and billionaires. They don't get audited. They're not getting audited because the IRS can't afford to take on the wealthy, and the powerful. And that's exactly the way Republicans want it. Remember when Donald Trump lied? Well, when didn't he lie? But one of his 
40,000 lies in the past five years is that he couldn't make his tax returns public because he was being audited. He wasn't being audited. He was never audited. The IRS didn't have enough people to sort through something like 500 of his shell companies. The IRS, up until last year, up until the Inflation Reduction Act, was not being funded enough to keep up with inflation. So the IRS was not really collecting from the wealthy. It's why Jeff Bezos you know, doesn't pay taxes. It's exactly what the rich and powerful want. They do not want the IRS to collect money from the wealthy, and they will lie. They will just make shit up. So they wouldn't you make shit up if you could save billions of dollars each year? And they get away with it so long as there are fatuous liars willing to parrot nonsensical talking points like this. Taxation is theft. Taxation is theft. Yes, you will keep keeping your money. You can keep your money as long as you have people like Congresswoman Luna spreading these lies. And as we saw in the midterms, 70 million Americans are stupid enough to believe all this. None of this can happen. The wealthy don't get to keep their money without liars like Congresswoman Luna. And it's evil. It is pure, undiluted evil because these lies keep our schools underfunded, our homeless unhoused. We can't afford single payer or free tuition at public universities because these liars allow the rich to cheat us of what they owe the government. The liars are in the GOP, and they make it all possible. They make all this immiseration possible by making it easy for the rich not to pay their taxes. Here is Congresswoman Anna Paulina Luna. She's, this is her first term. Here she is back in December, Speaking at Turning Points USA, this is Charlie Kirk's right-wing fascist neo-Nazi organization. Here she is uh, speaking, lying at Turning Points USA last December, right after getting elected. And keep this in mind, Anna used to be, Congresswoman Anna Polina Luna, used to be head of Hispanic outreach for Turning Points. Here is... Here she is lying in December. Honestly, had I not gotten involved with Turning Point, I probably wouldn't be standing here today. I could have made the easier decision, which would have been to go to medical school and just hope that someone else would have dealt with it. Medical school. The easier decision, going to medical school. Honestly, that's what she said. She said she could take the easy <laughs> route and go to medical school, but instead she's uh, running as a MAGA Republican from Florida. That, that's the harder, harder road to take. Honestly, I would have gone to medical school if I didn't instead come to work for Turning Points and then run for office. Honestly, I would have gone to medical school if my junior year in high school, uh, instead of huffing cleaning solvents with my cousin, uh, instead, I had taken organic chemistry. I would have gone to medical school, honestly. Uh, I would have gone to medical school if Catherine Heigl and Patrick Dempsey didn't quit Grey's Anatomy. I lost interest in med medicine after they left. Honestly, I'm a liar. In an interview, the newly elected congresswoman, this is an interview she gave five years ago to a Canadian magazine, and she said, I'm able to take on different personalities depending on what image I'm going for. I think getting into the character of what you are selling is super important. We have a method prevaricator. This is, this is unique. This is, this is fantastic. She's a liar. She is a liar. And these lies get people homeless, they don't get educations. They, they die. They don't get health care. 
These are lies she is willing to tell for the for the rich. Shall we? Let's talk about her lies, and they are they're pretty good. They're, let's uh, go over these. She claims to be Jewish. She's not. Uh, well, how not Jewish is she? Her father was a Nazi during <laughs> World War II. Uh, I, you know, I'm not like a historian, but I think being a Nazi during World War II, I'm pretty sure that's the opposite of being Jewish. But at least she comes by her contempt for Antifa, honestly. In 2015, she was white, but then in 2018, she was offered a job to head Hispanic outreach for Turning Point, so she said she was no longer white and changed the pronunciation of her name and became Hispanic. Yeah. Honestly? Yeah, honestly, Mrs. George Santos. Honestly. Let's continue. In order to get elected uh, to Congress, she lied and told some story about a 2019 home invasion that never existed. She lied about being <laughs> raised by a single mother with absolutely no support system. And besides claiming to be Jewish, white, and Hispanic, she's also claimed to be Middle Eastern. So at least her lies have a healthy dose of multiculturalism. She's very inclusive. Sometimes she's white, sometimes she's Hispanic, sometimes she's Jewish. Sometimes if she feels like it, she's Middle Eastern. She's a veritable rainbow coalition of subterfuge, which is why she has no problem saying... Taxation is theft. Taxation is theft. She has no problem lying because she is willing to lie for the rich. When you lie for the rich, you are rewarded first by getting elected to Congress as a Republican, then with either a job on Fox News or K Street. Republicans are now lying to try to make Donald Trump's 2017 tax cuts for the wealthy. They're trying to make them permanent. And the only way they can do that is by lying. As the Washington Post points out, the 2017 tax cuts for the wealthy were just a sugar high, a temporary sugar high for the economy. The tax cuts, like all tax cuts for the wealthy, did not stimulate the economy. And they most certainly didn't pay for themselves by bringing in more tax revenue. Supply side economics, the trickle down theory, is a lie. And people will keep the club for growth. People will keep telling this lie because they get paid to tell the lie. This is nothing but a lie. And it gets repeated by Republicans. The lie that tax cuts create so much economic activity, the budget gets balanced from all the taxes paid and all that economic activity. It never happened. It never happened. Reagan had to raise taxes after he lowered them. Supply-side economics, they do not work. Look at Kansas, this laboratory of supply-side economics. Governor Brownback cut taxes so hard, even Republicans in Kansas said, what? This is ridiculous. We, we have to, they vote, and they, vo they voted to raise taxes because you go broke when you give tax cuts to the wealthy. But Republicans have one purpose, and that is to repeat this. Taxation is theft. Taxation is theft. And they claim that the IRS has been weaponized. But it hasn't been weaponized. Unless, unless your former FBI director, James Comey, or the guy who replaced James Comey, former acting FBI director Andy McCabe. Both men tried, tried to investigate Donald Trump and his collusion with Russia. 
And then the IRS gets weaponized. Both men were fired by Donald Trump in 2017 and then subjected to the most intrusive type of audit the IRS can possibly conduct. Now, there is an audit that only 4,000 Americans get each year. It's described as an autopsy while the corpse is still alive. Costs you a lot of money, and nobody can really explain who gets this audit and why. For some odd reason, what are the chances, but this happened, two former FBI directors who, the year before they received this special audit, they were looking into Donald Trump's relationship with Vladimir Putin. He fired them. And then, what are the odds Andy McCabe and James Comey both found themselves undergoing the worst audit any American citizen can get? All of this going on while Donald Trump was not being audited in direct violation of IRS policy. It is the IRS's policy to audit all sitting presidents. Why? To make sure they're not cashing in. They're not violating the emoluments clause. To make sure they're not making money off being leader of the free world. For some reason, when Donald Trump was president, the IRS miraculously forgot to do their job and audit Donald Trump during his first two years as president. But somehow, out of 350 million Americans, the audit, the big audit, the capo de coupe, pop, what do they call it? The capo de the big audit reserved for just 4,000 of the 350 million Americans who pay their taxes. The audit of all audits ended up getting conducted in the same year on two former FBI directors who Donald Trump had just fired personally because they wouldn't stop looking into his collusion with Russia. What are the odds? What are the odds? So when Republicans talk about a weaponized IRS, they're telling the truth. Because when Republicans like Donald Trump or Richard Nixon, we all know about how he weaponized the IRS, when Donald Trump or Richard Nixon are president, uh, the IRS gets weaponized. So they are telling the truth. And yeah, taxation is theft. It is theft. It's theft because the richest people in America, instead of paying taxes, are given bailouts. They're given government contracts and Paycheck Protection Act money that they don't deserve. Yeah, taxation is theft when the money you and I pay to the IRS somehow always seems to make its way into the grasping hands of people like Donald Trump. If you enjoyed today's segment of The David Feldman Show, please hit the like button. And I don't get any corporate funding. I, you know, this is, I do this. Uh, the only reason you're actually listening to this show right now is because one of your friends copy and pasted the link to this episode and shared it. So if there was anything you think was important, please copy and paste the link to this episode and share it with your friends on social media or through email. That's the best way to help me. If you, if you want to support me, just share this with your friends and hit the like button and subscribe to this podcast. I think that's it. And leave a comment in the comment section down below. If you listen to this show, you'll know that I read every single comment. I 
don't respond to every single comment, but I read every single comment and then I incorporate some of that information as long as it checks out, as long as there are citations and hyperlinks, uh, I will use it uh, in an upcoming episode. So thank you to the people who have been forwarding me news stories and comments and uh, the my thing that I did on Ukraine and Roger Waters was uh, not easy. And a lot of you sent me some valuable uh, Paul LeBeau, thank you. A lot of in interesting information. So thank you for that. I don't want to argue with anybody. I'm just trying. Uh, I want to get fact checked. If you think I'm getting, if I get my facts wrong, please correct me. Uh, I need to know that and I will correct myself. Sometimes I get a year wrong. Like I'll say 2008 instead of 2018. I get worked up. I have a habit of doing that. Uh, I don't correct that. Maybe I should. Is that everything? We do office hours every Friday night at 8 p.m. If you want to talk with me, I make myself available to all the listeners from 8 till 9.30 every Friday night at office hours. We start office hours at 6 p.m. Eastern, but I, the community runs it, but I take 90 minutes from 8 till 9.30. So anybody wants to talk to me, if you have a, a story you want to tell me, something I should read, a complaint, a suggestion, God forbid, a compliment, a thank you. <laughs> um, as, as Prince Charles would say, I'm all ears. And if you would like the invitation, to, uh, as Prince Charles would say, all, I'm all ears. I don't know if you can hear that. Okay. Uh, I don't know if that is coming through. It, uh, I don't know if you can hear that. Can you hear this? Hang on. If you would. Uh... I can't do that. So if you want uh, to get the link for office hours, go to my website and hit office hours and it gives you the, the Zoom link. If you don't have Zoom, there's also a dial-in number. And please subscribe to my newsletter. It comes out every Friday at around six o'clock and contained within my newsletter is a link for office hours. We're growing the community. I want to meet everybody who wants to be met and I read your comments. Let's keep the conversation going, please. Stay warm, stay angry. This weather is the fault of ExxonMobil. It was the fault of the oil companies. Hmm. I don't know. That's a real... The police are coming. Good. Uh, I'm David Feldman reminding you to stay strong and protect the weak.